Good morning, Madam Regent. Good morning. How are you? Hi, <laughs> and you? I'm pretty fine. Uh, I also welcome Dr. Shahab is with us. It's the third day and we are going to start our workshop. And um, I, all, I also welcome all the participants who are live and who are with us. So uh, mm. now, ma'am, it's over to you. You mean we need to wait for a moment? All right. I think Xiaohong, you can share share your screen for the first page of the slides. Okay. Can I see the slides? Yes, yes.
Xiao Hong, you can start for the first uh, for the first session. You can start to. Xiao okay. Hong. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. I start with. Uh, good morning. Today, uh, we, we want to present the environment mo modeling based requirements engineering. And uh, this, uh, we also have two, so we have our uh, supporting team. And uh, this uh, environment, environment modeling based requirements engineering, Professor Ji Jing has a monograph. And uh, if you want to say more, about the, the environment modeling are based RE. Uh, I just uh, attach the, 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 the URL here and you can bought it from here. And, and this is uh, our, uh, the, today's lecture is about the fifth part and the sixth, sixth part and uh, we want to uh, give you a brief introduction to the environment modeling based requirements engineering, include the, our background and motivation and uh, the environment modeling, the environment model and based requirements and the citation and some uh, environment related non-functional requirements. And then uh, conclusion. Uh, first, we want to start from the cyber physical systems. Actually, there are many cyber physical systems uh, in our daily life. They drive less cars, uh, automated uh, uh, driving cars, and uh, the plane, and uh, the trains. And also in a smart home, it's also a CPS. The CPS in, integrate the facilities of home life. It uses the uh, technology to in, enhance the comfort and entertainment of the home. It's about the network communication. It has the automatic control, audio and video and security, safety, etc. And the for the, the systems for smart home, we have uh, many layers, uh, the service layer, the sensor platform layer, the physical layer, and in it, they include many devices. These devices uh, are, are individual nodes of the systems and you, the, uh, also they, they can be a uh, personal, they also have a logical, and we also has a uh, person inside. And uh, the content, they ha also have many data information, information and the knowledge that need to be acquired, stored and processed by the system. So in this system, the system is composed by diversity and the distribution het heterogeneous components. And another example about uh, about the CPS, you want to see the lunar rover, rover, lunar rover, that is the Chang'e, Chang'e lunar rover. The, uh, in China, we also have, uh, we got a lunar rover, it's about uh, Yu Tu, it's called Yu Tu. Yu Tu lunar rover is a, uh, um, equipped with many devices, for example, the camera, the image spectrometer, lunar radar, etc. And it can stand uh, extreme conditions and it is uh, need to uh, do the climbing and the obstacles mounting cap capability. And uh, this autonomous space flight controlled actually by a computer system. And this uh, uh, system needs to uh, face the unpredictability of the space environment. And details, it needs to address the physical events and the natural events. It also needs to correspond to changes and unpredictable 
predictability of the system itself, including the failure of physical equipment, failure of logical components, and component connection, and communication failure, etc. And in fact, it, it, the, channel, the uh, lunar rover needs to have the ability, ad adaptability, it needs to adapt to new environments, new requirements, new rules. And it also needs to assurance the system. It has uh, to ensure the quality of the service, the security, confidentiality, and the reliability. In order to do all of this, it needs to deal with the openness and dynamic and predictable uh, of the system in operating environment. So to define a cyber physical system, the CPS or CP, uh, CPSS social system, the, it can be uh, defined as a software systems to, uh, to be can tightly integrated with the physical systems and the social system with networked sensing, computation, actu actuation, etc. It's just like this, this is a cyber world and this is a physical world. You need to interact with the physical world and the sense the change of the physical world. The CPS has many applications and now it is increasing um, in application of a critical uh, in critical uh, domains. For example, the aviation, uh, the transportation, the healthcare. And all this, this, this uh, kind of uh, systems pose great challenges to RE. It, uh, it, it can be uh, in three ways. First is the increasing size and complexity. The second is the open and non-deterministic environment. The third is the situation where and adaptation. And uh, why this is a big challenge because as we said uh, in the first uh, in the first lecture, we said the RE assumptions, there are three penetrations, environment, properties, specification, and the requirements. Actually, uh, in the traditional RE, the task of RE is given environment properties and requirements. And when conduct the RE process, then you got the system specification. And this environment property is given, which means it's not changing. But in all these uh, open, open, open environments, the environment property is changing. So it's quite a different assumption. And for this CPS, actually it has uh, property of the environment, the openness, it's dynamic changing. And with these properties, he need to issue that to, to ensure that the system is secu security, is privacy, the time, the safety, the physical injection. So we need to find that the first is to uh, model the environment. The environment is actually the first class citizen and its properties should be explicitly modeled. And among the representative uh, master approaches we have uh, introduced, the goal-oriented approaches using goals for, 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 for the requirements. And the, the uh, actual intention approach using the dependencies among intentional actors as a, as a requirements. And the scenarios driven approach is using system usage experience. All this not suitable. And the problem framed approach, they actually explicitly uh, model the, uh, the environment. They, they explain that this distinguish the, the environment. So 
here they count the environment entities and uh, uh, some of this, their dynamics can be explicitly identified and represented. So we propose uh, RE for CPS and this is a environment modeling based approach. In this approach, we're extending the problem frame representations to and the structures, the models of the environment elements, and the try to provide analysis methods for deriving and specifying requirements. And uh, to do this, we also need to define the environment model. And uh, we, this environment model is a kind of a abstraction of the environment elements and uh, in addition, the environment model will capture the environment dynamics. For, for application, for domain application, we also got the domain specific environment model. So uh, basically in this lecture, we want to show you uh, how to build the environment model and how they can be used in the requirements and citation and in the some non-functional requirements. So first, we uh, start with environment modeling. Environment modeling, we have three principles. The first principle uh, is the, the classifiability. In the environment, it's treated as a first-class citizenship. And the environment objects are, need to be classified Second is uh, uh, statefulness. The environment object is stateful, and the environment is stateful. So the third principle is the dynamics. The environment object to have inner behavior regulations apart from the attribute aspects. Uh, we can see the environment of the smart home system. It, if this is a smart home soft, uh, well, here system, we mean the selfish system, we can see it will interact with the many things, the toaster, uh, the coffee maker, the display system, the car, the light, the air conditioner, alarm, robot, cushion, window, and the, the, the weather, these are both of the, its environment. And uh, we think this environment is uh, composed by a, a, a set of environment this, uh, entities. And these entities, we can make a classification according to the first principle. Um, according to Jackson's book, we also classify the environment entity to be three categories. The first is bindable entity. So by this bindable entity, you typically consists of the people. It is uh, the same concept with the bindable domain in pro uh, problem frame approach. And uh, it uh, means that it's physical, but it lack, lacks positive predictable inter internal causality. The second is the coral entity. The coral entity, it's actually the car, car domain is there are uh, some devices, their uh, properties include the predictable coral relationships among their coral phenomena. And the lexical, the third is the lexical entity is about the physical representation of the data. So uh, we can, okay, here there are three entities, printer, customer, and report. We can think about what kind of a entity the printer. Yeah, printer is a device, and it is a carol entity. The second is the customer, customized person, as usually it's a bindable entity. And report is actually as a summary partition of the data, so it can be the lexical entity. And uh, 
we can also distinguish this, this, this entity, the sweeping robot. What is a, a sweeping robot? Is it, it is a, a bindable entity or is a carol entity? It, it depends, I think. If it is only a sweeping robot, it has no autonomous idea. So which means if you give a import and uh, its uh, output is certain, then it is a carol. But it is very smart. It, you can't predict its output. I think it's abidable. A second is toaster. The toaster actually, this is a carol. And for some statistic data, I think this is a lexical. Okay, I forgot this abidable entity, carol entity and the lexical entity. After this classification, we need to know uh, how to model them according to their characteristics. And for the bindable entity, because you couldn't control it, it's just the people. So first, we, we, we can, you, we can uh, have some attribute. We can also uh, get what the comment it, it, uh, he can issue. So we got uh, this comment really event, event issues. And for the carol entity, actually we can use uh, state transition diagram to describe it as we uh, described in, in the first lecture, the state transition diagram I have used. Do you uh, uh, still remember it? The third lexical entity, lexical entity, you can say have a uh, attribute. So, uh, sorry. So this is how we want to model them. And according to this, we can get all these uh, basic concepts. For example, the environment entity, the environment entity is, uh, there are three kinds of environment entity, carol entity, lexical entity, bindable entity, and for carol entity, lexical entity, and the bindable entity, we also, we both have a, a static attribute. So we got the attribute, and for each attribute, we can have a value. And uh, for the bindable entity, we can model which, uh, what issue can it issue. And the second is uh, the carol entity. The carol entity, uh, we will use a state transition diagram to describe it. And the state transition diagram, it has state, has transition, and also these transitions that can be triggered by the transition. So this is all the concepts and the associations are among these concepts. This is what we call the environment uh, model. And for expressing this model, environment model, we want you to build it using something, using what? Yeah. We want to use the ontology. Ontology actually, it is uh, not a concept, it is not originally a concept in software engineering. Actually, uh, ontology is used in the field of knowledge repetition. And it is often defined as a, a repetition or conceptualization. And it is just uh, now it's called knowledge engineering. And since uh, it's early days, the notion of the ontology in computer science. Uh, and they, then so we'll, uh, they give a new engineering called ontology engineering. And if you are interested, you can see, you can uh, check that. And uh, usually for uh, ontology, uh, we can this, uh, represent the entities and the relationships uh, which uh, exist in some domain. So according to this, we, we uh, model our environment using 
uh, we, we express our environment model using the ontology. And uh, uh, I want to say more about the ontology because ontology can be widely used in many uh, domains. And it, uh, it should also uh, can represent a shared conceptualization. And uh, this can be reused. And uh, the, the uh, ontology actually uh, can be uh, interpreted in many different ways. And the concrete ontologies can run in several di dimensions. And different kinds of ontologies can be classified. Um, here, uh, over uh, distinguish the uh, uh, generic core and the domain ontologies. Here, we use uh, uh, generic upper model level. So we call it our environment model, the uh, upper environment ontology. And the second is domain ontologies. Actually, these domain ontologies are specific to universe of di discourse. So, for it represent this ontology, we so use some uh, ontology editor. This editor we choose is called ProTeach. And uh, I asked you to uh, download the ProTeach desktop and uh, uh, install it before the class. I don't know whether you have uh, installed it or not. And uh, this practice is uh, actually it's a Stanford University, and it's very uh, it's very wide it's very used in building intelligent systems. And uh, in the uh, in in its uh, homepage, it also said the properties has uh, many uh, used. He provide ontology library. Here is some examples. And uh, for example, the education ontology uh, for the, the ge geography information meta model and the intuition ontology, biochemical ontologies, uh, bio, biological packs and the breast, uh, breast cancer ontology. You can build your own ontology if you want to share some knowledge with some people and, uh, and uh, achieve uh, just uh, to achieve uh, a shared understanding of the terms in a, in a specific domain. So, okay, back to other environment model. We want to uh, put this in the protege. And uh, what we want to put is only the concept and the uh, associations here. This concept association. So uh, now I ask Manti to uh, uh, lead you to to say how to use the protege. Now I want to uh, ask Manti and the. Uh, and uh, sorry, I want a new share. No. Okay. Now you can open your uh now you can open your 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 portage now. Uh, good morning everyone. Now I will show you how to build the up level ontology with Protege. Firstly we can create a new project here. And in upper level ontology, everything starts from a 
environment entity. So here we can create a class called environment entity. Environment entity. And then environment entity can be classified into um, causal entity, lexical entity, and a biddable entity. So here we can um, create the three classes as this class, classes, subclass. So here we can create causal entity, biddable entity, and lexical entity. And the uh, cause entity sometimes will have a STD state transition diagram. So we can also create a class called state transition diagram. A state transition diagram will be related to state transition and event. So here we have state transition and the event. Now here, when you click this button, you can create a class under this um, class. And when you um, click on this button, you will create a class uh, in the same level with this class. And um, the environment ent entity will have some will have some attribute, so we can create a class attribute. Our attribute will have a value, so we can also have a class value. And now this is all classes. Um, besides the classes, we will also have some relations between the classes. So here we can we can type the tab object properties to create some properties between the classes. Um, firstly, the causal entity, um, each environment entity will have a attribute. So we can, we can create the property called has static. This means the attribute is a static and it can be related, related to here yeah, we can class the class hierarchy. It's between environment entity and 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 the uh, attribute. And then each cause entity will have a STD. STD is that is dynamic, so we can create a property called has dyna dynamic. The relation is between a causal entity and a, a state transition diagram. Now, when we have STD, we'll have some state transitions and events. So we can create the property called has state. Has state has transition and has event. Has event is between state transition diagram and event. Has a trans is between STD and transition. And has state is between STD and state. Um, besides that, there are also some relations between state transition and event. For example, a transition is from a state to a state. It's, it starts from a state and ends to a state. So we can have two properties called source from and sync to. This means that a transition is sourced from a state. 
and it will sync to a state. Oh, transition, sorry. Transition. Yeah, and uh, there are also some relations between transition and event. We have two properties called be triggered by, oh, sorry, it will, it will not be a subclass, it's wrong. It's the same level we think too. Be triggered by and uh, Course. This means that a transition is triggered by a event, and an event can cause a transition. Can cause a transition. Yes, and uh, um, this is all about a causal entity. And when we look at B double entity, it can issue some events. So we can have a property called can issue. This means that B double, oh, not only B double and uh, yeah, B double, B double entity. B double entity can, can issue some events. And at the last, at the last, we will have that on every, on um, here has that means that every environment entity will have an attribute, and of course, uh, every attribute will have a value. So we can create the property has value. That means. Every attribute attribute will have a value. Now here we have created the top upper level ontology. Here are the classes and here are the properties. And thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll leave you some time to be familiar with this. And if you are not uh, you are not you can't uh, follow it and you can see the demo here. And this 
uh, practice only need you to understand that the other concept and uh, associations can be modeled and in, in practice means uh, we, we recorded this, this, this information in practice. Okay, uh, if, you, if you haven't finished, uh, mm, you can finish after this lecture. And now I want to see, uh, see more about uh, the, the, the for a specific domain and uh, how can we uh, model this environment in today's. For example, we use in the very small as a toy example about the light unit control problem. And in the light control pro uh, problem, actually that's a set of light units to be controlled by switch operators. So in this uh, domain, actually we have two environment entities, light unit and switch operator. And the light unit is a device that uh, has a carol, uh, carol predictability relationships, which means that if you, uh, if you on the state of uh, on, and if you are power, uh, get a pulse or off pulse, then you will be in the state of off. So, and if you are in the, on, in the state of off, then uh, get a, after he received the on pulse, it will be in the state on. So the, the light unit is a carol entity and it uh, has attribute ID because there are maybe many light units here. And, uh, and it also have a state transition diagram. Sorry, uh, we have a state transition diagram like this. And uh, for the second environment entity, it's a switch operator. Uh, the, uh, the entity type is uh, bindable because it's a portion. And it also can have uh, its own ID to, to identify it. And the events it can issue is a um, button of button. And now uh, we need to put all these, all these information into the environment uh, ontology. And this environment ontology will be specific to the light control problem. So next time or each time you use the, you, you need to develop a light controller, you can reference, refer, uh, refer to this ontology. And now I ask your TA to, to show you how to put these information in the ProTeach. Okay, now I need to uh, get a new, uh, go back to the ProTeach. Proteach, okay. Uh, let's see how to add these information based on the upper uh, environment ontology. Now I will show you how to build an environment and an environment ontology based on the upper level ontology. Um, firstly, we have a causal entity called a causal entity called light unit. So here we add a subclass between the causal entity called light light unit. And the light unit will have an attribute attribute called ID. So here we add an attribute ID. An attribute ID. And we can add the relation between them here. Here we can choose object restriction creator. And here we can choose have static and ID. Uh, we choose only. So this means that a light unit will, has, will have the attribute called ID. 
and we also have a std called uh, uh, light unit std it's a state transition diagram so it help, will have some event transitions and states the event is on pause and off pause Uh, when it receives on pause, it will be on, and when it receives an uh, off pause, it will be off. So the state is on and off. That means the light be on and the light be off. And on and off. Uh, and the transition, as I just as I just said just now, a transition is start, it starts from a state and ends to a state. So the transition there will be two transitions transition on off transition on off and transition off on off on transition on off means the transition starting from on and into off and the transit trans off on means the transition starting from off and starting from off and ending to on so a uh, cost entity will have a dynamic std so here the light unit we can add the dynamic light unit std and this std will have many will have the two events the two transitions and the two states here we add them here it has event of pulse has event on pause, has state on and a state off. Okay. Sorry. It has state on and a state off, and it will have the transition. Um, transition trans off on and the trans on off. Here is the light unit STD. And as I just said, a transition is triggered by a event. So here we add the, sorry. Here we add the relation be triggered by, transition off on is triggered by the event on pause. And the transition on off is triggered by the event of pulse. And the same, similarly, we can have that the event will cause transition. Event of pulse will cause the transition, transition on off. And on pulse will cause the transition, transition off on. And the transition sinks from a state and Sink, starts from a state and then sink to a state. So here, transition of on. It's, it will, it starts it from off and sink to on. Transition on off, it starts from on and will sink to off, sink to off. Yeah, this is something about the light unit. And we will also have a beatable entity. Beatable entity consists of people. So we have a, we can add a subclass called switch operator. This is someone who will press the, the on button and off button. So there will, there will have two, there will be two events called on button. and off button. A biddable entity will have, it will, it can issue the events. So here we add, can issue on button and off button. 
And a biddable entity will also have an ID. So here we can add that. It has static ID. Okay, this is all about the environment ontology. Okay, this, this is only a example of very small environment, uh, domain-specific environment ontology. Now, uh, I want to, uh, the ne next, maybe, I think that there's a need for you to, ex uh, there's a need for you to, ex uh, to express how to how to use this ontology to describe uh, environment entities, uh, model the environment entities in other domains. So I'll leave you some uh, some time some time to uh, look at us uh, a environment ontology for smart conference systems. Uh, there's no need to. Uh, put everything on, I just want you to do some exercise. And in this uh, environment ontology, you can see a uh, environment ontology for the smart conference. Uh, here we, we list some of the uh, requirements here. And from this, this requirements, actually, you could see many, many, uh, many nodes here. For example, the air conditioner, the projector. I need you to find out there's uh, environment entities and their attributes and uh, their uh, classification. And uh, you can uh, put these uh, these models into the uh, upper environment ontology. You can try. I'll leave you some minutes. And if you have uh, some uh, problem, uh, you, are, you are free to to answer now, to, to ask now, and uh, or you can uh, just write uh, in the chat room. I will see it. Yeah. You have a question? Yeah, I see someone said uh, uh, the how to use uh, it for RE. Yes, the next step I will tell you how to use them in RE. And now uh, I think you need to know what's inside. What's inside of the ontology and how can this ontology be used? And the ontology, uh, now you have a knowledge graph this all for the smart systems, for the AI.
Okay. Uh, maybe you're not finished. I, I think maybe you will after after the lecture. And uh, now I want, uh, let's say together, for example, for this uh, environmental ontology, I think the best way to find all these nouns in this, uh, uh, in this descriptions and you will find uh, many, many uh, environment entities. And the next thing is how to model them and what, what, how, what's their class classification. For the air conditioner, the projector, the bulb, the blind, the microphone, the window. Actually, they are Carol entities. For other Carol entities, you can, or uh, you can draw a state transition diagram. And for the state transition diagram, uh, if you can have this kind of a diagram, actually you can put it in the practice. And I know someone you uh, can't wait to say how they can be used in the RE. Yeah, I will, I will go to the, the next step is how these uh, ontologies can be yeah. used in the requirements <laughs> engineering. The first step, uh, we can use it in the problem description process. And to this process, we still use problem frame notation here. And uh, here we use environmental ontology to provide many information to uh, reduce uh, human input. And uh, this process actually we uh, divided into three parts. The first is to determine the system boundary. And the second is to identify the system behavior. And the third is uh, define the requirements. We'll follow the process and know uh, in, each, in each step how our environment ontology is used. The first, uh, we, use, uh, we want to use a very detailed example, the light controller to, to say, uh, how to how how the environment ontology uh, uh, system in the pro, uh, requirement elicitation pro process. In here, the light controller we need to build two uh, two requirements. The first is a base operator's comments, and the second is to, to control the light unit uh, periodically. And this is the environment ontology we have built earlier. And okay, let's say for step one, we need to identify the system boundary. This is to identify the environment entities. Actually for, environment, uh, for identifying the environment entities and for different environment entity types, Actually, we, we can have uh, different questions. For the by the unity, you can who use the system. Okay, okay, this, this is uh, uh, guided. But what we want to say, all these by entities, what can we get from the, what can we get from the environment in the, uh, ontology? Actually, from the light controller uh, ontology, we have two environment entities, switch operator and the light unit. So reading these environmental entities and uh, we think the boundary of the light controller may be, may be the environment entities from this, uh, from, the, from, the, uh, from, from the ontology. So the first we report all the light the the environment entity here and then ask the uh, and ask the people ask the uh, analyzer to uh, to in, uh, to uh, assure to to be sure about uh, where the one is the boundary actually you can see okay the light unit is and the switch operator is and then we also have the say carol and the biteable characteristics that we don't need to identify that. Uh, but the light controller, the name of it, you need to 
uh, name it by yourself. And the second step is how to identify the interfaces between the, uh, the controller and its inter problem domains. Actually, it needs to identify the shared information. Are these shared information actually, uh, actually are between the problem domains and the, and the machine? So are these phenomenon could be uh, from the environment entities? For example, these are things from the environment ontology and from this on pulse of pulse, we can identify this, uh, this, 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 these two interfaces. And from the uh, switch operator, the events that it can issue, and we, can also get the, we can also get another two uh, interfaces on button of button. And the, all this you can choose from the, from the environment uh, ontology. The second step is to define the requirements. For, uh, for define the requirements, actually, uh, first you, you, you identify the requirements. It can be written in natural language, but it's the most important to uh, identify requirements, uh, references, and the constraints. And uh, these references are constraints. Actually, for each Carol, Carol entity, we can highly citing. Uh, we can find it states, uh, events, states. So the uh, uh, association has dynamic and to find uh, if you want to, to be in the state of which and the, of what phenomenon should you receive or send. So uh, this could be obtained from the environment ontology. For example, this is the, the state transition diagram. From this, we can get, okay, we have a state on and off, sorry, on and off. This on and off, off would be what we want the light unit uh, should be. So this on and off could be a, a requirement constraint. And uh, for the bindable, uh, for the bindable entity, we could find uh, all the events that it can issue. So it's uh, maybe uh, the unbutton of button. So from this, we can get this um, this uh, requirement reference and the constraint. So uh, I will uh, use the same light unit and the switch operator and uh, the same light controller problem and the same two as yesterday and to say how our environment ontology aided the whole process. Okay, now you can uh, open, you can open our, uh, ho our homepage here and now to find the, the tools and the, the second two diagram based problem description here. And I ask the student to show the, to show how, uh, how can we uh, choose, uh, how can we get the information from the environment ontology. Now here, when we open this tool, first day we can create a new project. Maybe it's called speech 0823. And then we can load an environment ontology. This one is the ontology we built just now. We open it. Now here we get the um, context diagram.
Um, we can get the light unit and the switch operator. This is from the environment ontology. And we should change the name of the machine. It's the light controller. So we change it into light controller and its short name is LC. Okay. And we will um, change the, the phenomenon in the interface. We'll add some phenomenon. Here the phenomena is uh, read from the environment ontology. Here in this interface, we have on pulse and off pulse. Yeah, this this can be this can be chosen. And in this interface between LC and the switch operator, we have um on button and off button here. Uh, that should be maybe uh. In fact, we can choose them from here, but maybe there are some problems. So we type them manually, um, button and off button. Um, okay, next, next. Then why what happened? Part over. I did it. Okay, let's try again. Okay. Maybe there are some problems and we will try again. So here we open the tool. Great. And read the ontology. We change the name of the machine. And oh, and uh, add the in phenomena in the interface. Here it's on pause, on pause, and off pause. Now here, before you add the phenomena, you should click on the next to the to this step identify interactions and then you can add the phenomena. Here we can and we can add on button and off button. Next and next and then we will draw the requirements. We have two requirements. The first one is light region. This means that in any situation, the light should be on, off, on, off, and so on. And the second requirement is commanded behaviors. This means when a switch operator presses a button, the state of the light unit will be changed. So here we add a constraint between the light unit and the light region. Here, here we should add the phenomenon. We, we can choose the phenomenon on. It's a state and the off. And off. And between the two problem domains and the command behavior, we can also add some references. Firstly, it's also it's the same as the uh, as just now. We can choose uh, dominant on and off and off. 
And here we add a reference between SO and the commanded behaviors. Oh, it means that the switch operator will press the button, press on the button, press off the button. So you got on button and off button. Okay, this is our problem diagram. We can see some information in the right bar. The phenomenon, the interaction, and the references. Uh, <coughs> Okay, uh, for the, this too, I want to add something that uh, you, from the environment, from the proper domain, these are from the environment ontology. And for these interfaces, we also can add something from the environment, uh, environment ontology, for example, this ID. And uh, all these things, of course, you can uh, just write on it uh, because we, we don't suppose at the beginning the environment is very complete. And if it is a complete, it, uh, it has all the things. But if uh, it is not uh, complete and we, we, uh, we allow the user to add new information in it and uh, using this information, maybe we need to uh, to complete our ontology. So this is our feedback here. And uh, for the requirement reference, we also have a, I want to, we also have a phenomenon here. So that's the, that is the, uh, the, 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 the state that it will be, so. Uh, this is how the environment ontology aided the whole process. And I want to, well, we want to go back to get uh, to our slides. And uh, I want to show you a, a, a more complex, a more complex uh, uh, example. And uh, it will be made, uh, it will be uh, say how we using, we are using the uh, environment ontology here. Uh, this uh, uh, example yesterday we have to, uh, we have uh, talked about the, the package router problem. And uh, in case you forget, I will say it again about uh, the package router used to, uh, to by the postal and delivery organization to sort packages into bins. And the problem is to build the control machine to obey the operator's commands to route packages to their destination bins and to report the misreported packages. Uh, first, we need to, to get an environment ontology. So for this environment ontology, uh, from experience, we find there are many environment entities, for including the package, package conveyor here, and the package dish, and the router, and the switch, and the bin, and the operator, and the, the layout designer, the destination informant. And uh, for each of the uh, each kind of the environment entity, we add the attribute of environment entities. For the package, we think it has a label. For the router, we is router. This is the how it's a router. Every pipe, the sensor, the switch, the bin, the whole, and the reading machine. It has it can read the label the packet ID, the destination. And for the display unit, it's also, it can display the package ID, the bin, the destination. And for the events that available entities you should, we can, uh, for all the uh, bindable entities, for uh, example, the operator, the layout designer, the destination informant, the operator, he can have the on button or off button. 
And for the layout design, you can edit the layout comments and for the destination information, you can edit the destination being comments. And for the Carol entities, we can have the state machine. For the package conveyor, it is, has two states, stopped and running. And there are transitions between the running and stopped. For the packages, actually, it is uh, if we sense on, then the package came to uh, a, a new sensor, then, then the position is uh, uh, open. And for the router, actually, it, gets, uh, it, it can set the switch to right or the left. And so we still use the, uh, the same step to show how we uh, use these environment entities uh, to ha help. And for this, first we found all the environment entities uh, could be listed as a, uh, as a, a, a candidate problem domain here. So, so the two will post everything here. And, uh, uh, but for your, uh, for, for your modeling, you may be find there's no need to uh, get so many environment entities here. So we may uh, merge some of the things. For example, we may, may merge the package and route together. We can choose some of the uh, environment entities, package conveyor, root operator, display unit. Yes. That's that's why I call it. These are the candidate, and this is uh, our uh, the the analyzer uh, confirmed domains. And the second step to find the entities. Okay, maybe you, uh, for example, from this state machine of the package conveyor, we find the on C and off C, and uh, for the bindable layout the. For the operator, we can get the on button, off button, and the two get interfaces here. And uh, for the third step three to define the requirements, we mean to uh, eliciting from the environment entities for each Carol entity. Actually, we identify three requirements. And from this, uh, the pack state machine of the package area, we find the requirement constraint is running, is stopped. And for the events that bind into the issue, they, they are on button of button. This is uh, from the bind entity. And uh, similarly, we can get the other uh, requirements uh, referenced and the constraints. And uh, now I don't want you to uh, ask students to, to do it uh, now. And uh, I want to show you uh, this demo. And uh, now we can open. And we can find it. You can find uh, our, our, our examples here, and uh, you can find the uh, the dialogue-based projection. And uh, here we got a lot of uh, demos here. And if you are interested, you can see all these demos and. Uh, with the environment entity, for example, the light controller, it does the have the problem how to how how to do the problem diagram, and the, with OWL, which means we use the environment ontology, and uh, we also do uh, other, for example, the interlocking systems for a railway, a railway control systems, and we also has a VBC for the uh, subway systems. And we also have the, the package router. And now I want to show you this package router. Yeah. You 
we, uh, this uh, ontology will we build. And now from this, we can see all the environment entities here. And now we want to, sorry, it is, uh, the, the network is not good. The network, it doesn't work. Okay. And uh, you can merge them. Okay, we also provide a, 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 a service called merge. And now you can only have uh, four environment entities here. And uh, then you add the phenomenon here. And uh, the, you can also, you can also, uh, I'm sorry. You can also get to all these uh, phenomena here. I'm sorry, this uh, network is not very good. And um, okay, all these phenomena actually can be selected from the environment ontology. Okay. Yeah, stop it. And if you are interested, please uh, search in this uh, website and try to serve. And we also have the other examples. And, uh, and if there, because this tool is still developing, if you have found some uh, bugs, please feel free to tell us. And uh, for these uh, ontologies, we'll uh, put it on this website and you can download it. Uh, we just uh, make it on this too. We are working on that. So don't worry about that. And also if you, as I said, if you have something, uh, please feel free to, to contact. Sorry, the home. Me? Uh, you can write to me. We uh, we have uh, our, our email here. Okay, and uh, uh, about uh, this uh, this work, I'll just uh, so this. Okay, let's go back to the slides. <laughs> It's a tool and a, and a demo about the, the problem description. The second I want to, to show you this environment ontology can also be used in problem projection. By problem projection, I hope you still have some uh, memory about uh, uh, this is a, a, what, what we can, we told you about uh, the decomposition and uh, how to decompose it. We use a scenario graph, scenario as a, a projection dimension. So in this uh, projection dimension, uh, we, the process, I hope you still remember the process. And I, I'll show you about the light controller from the light controller, we, we actually, we put this like this. First, we got, uh, we, we draw it from the expected uh, behavior here. And then the, the, this, this lines are drawn by, the, by our two. And then second, if you get uh, then the the uh, on the behavior interaction, the two will be uh, will be correspondingly will uh, add something like likely in the expected interaction. If you got the on button, then you expect the light unit will be on. Okay. 
then it will be on. And then in the behavior interaction, there will be a, a, a sequence between the on button and on pause. And if you got an off button and uh, you, uh, you expect the light unit will be off, then the two will automatically give you the, uh, the, the relation between off button and off pulse. Well, which means that the, the derivation is uh, automatically. And uh, some of you maybe uh, want to know why, why it is, why the requirements, why, how, how the environmental ontology is used in here. Yes, we want to say here, the, the, the red lines here from the on pause to on, the neighbor is from the environment ontology. Because we, uh, on the stage uh, transition diagram, we said on pause will trigger the stage being on, and the off pause will be trigger the stage in off. So, the environment uh, ontology. So the environment ontology uh, uh, provides this uh, relation. And if we got these relations, and we actually, if we put uh, relations between this phenomenon, which means this uh, uh, expected behavior, then the behavior interactions will be uh, the relations between these uh, behavior interactions will be uh, obtained automatically. So this is how the environment ontology is used in the project uh, projection process on drawing the scenario graph. So I'll ask the students to uh, show how this demo, uh, how this tool used uh, in in uh, uh, side, in in getting the environment ontology and use this ontology to support the to support the 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 scenario uh, the scenario drawing. Now I'll go back to our two. And now you can uh, you pick the tools and find this uh, problem projection here. Okay, now ask your TA to show the whole process. Uh, now we can open the project, choose the first. Now this is the contact diagram and problem diagram. Uh, we can click the next to check the diagram. And then ontology, uh, upload the ontology. Next. True. <laughs> Next, 
now this uh <laughs> if we are ontology now you can uh guess the uh, relations between uh behave behavior interaction and uh, except interaction the uh synchronization and the uh name uh behavior in a uh, in the ball now we can only add the relation uh, between exceptional interactions as the start and then as the merge then as the exceptional order And you can guess the uh, corresponding relation uh, between ex uh, behavior interactions. Oh, what's what? If, <laughs> if it's error, you can delete it. And uh, choose the correct. It's right, and then add uh, from on to off button, and uh, adjust their position, and uh, add the other relation, add the start and the merge. And as uh, you said, Behavior is uh, uh, behavior order. And then choose the seconds. Also as the relation. As the add, as the merge. And uh, as the relation between except uh, interactions. Now we finish the drawing and uh, click the next to, to check the uh, correctness and uh, integrity. Now it's the uh, uh, check result and there is no error. And then check the real form. Now the two uh, scenario graph are well formed and uh, then click the next perform the projection, get the two sub problem diagram next, and you can get the use case. That's all. I'm sorry, uh, uh, as I think the, I'm sorry, the, the, the two have something, uh, uh, have something wrong when it is uh, displaying, but I can uh, see, uh, see that this scenario graph as this, uh, in, in developing, you can see that these relations must be given and these relations are actually from the environment ontology. And uh, um, I, I want to leave some time for you to practice. And uh, maybe some of you said that uh, we, have, uh, we haven't finished the ontology here. And uh, we actually provide an ontology on the, uh, you can 
you can uh, download download it from the from our homepage and there are examples here examples we have the environment ontology we provide the download OWL you can download it oh now if you couldn't you can um, do it yourself and try to use and if there are any questions um, uh, uh, you can see it as the, the chat room I will see it and answer it <laughs> This is a uh, uh, top level environment ontology and this is the uh, light controller environment ontology. Of course, we have uh, the other packet router environment ontology. And uh, this environment ontology can be used in both uh, the early citation and the projection, the scenario drawing. Yeah, it maybe needs some time to download all these demos and to say, I, I, we will try our tool. Uh, now I, I ask a student to post on them today. Hello, Sean. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you have any we question? Are, we are moving towards uh, uh, the break. Or, oh, uh, break? or, uh, okay. or it's region join. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we oh, need to yeah. uh, have a break uh, of some time and, uh, and then we can start uh, about uh, in uh, three or three o'clock in, in in china and uh, 12 o'clock in it's 12 o'clock no uh, we will start the session now in uh, 20 minutes yeah break off 20 minutes how 20. about that okay thank you very much
Can you see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Everything correct, the screen. Okay, let's move on to the second uh, session of uh, today's workshop. Uh, before uh, before starting the second session, I would like to <laughs> remind you this uh, exercise, yeah, given by uh, Xiao Hong uh, in the last session. Please, uh, I mean, you, if you like, <laughs> you can do it uh, to this exercise um, at home. And so I, this is a homework. <laughs> that, that is a homework. Please do that. Try this in on the using the tool. Uh, that uh, has just been demoed by the student. Okay, uh, we can start uh, the second uh, session of uh, of today's uh, workshop. The this the last uh, in last session, Xiao Hong men uh, uh, mentioned the, the functional requirements related to the environment. But in this session, I would like to uh, to to talk about the non-functional requirements that related to the environment of the of the to be software that's non-functional uh also i would like to thank the supporting team for the oh, for delivering for help me to deliver in the whole uh, workshop oh yes this is the agenda just uh, yeah these two, the, the second part of this of today's session is about the non-functional requirements. Uh, non-functional requirements. I would like to uh, to to, uh, to talk about non-functional requirements is a big and big topic in requirements and nearly. I just uh, uh, within the. Uh, uh, one or two hours, I can. I think I can only uh, give you a very, very small portion of the of this topic. I choose two topics from the non-functional requirements. The first one is non-functional requirements patterns, and the second one is how to make the system more uh, dependable. So these are two different things. So let's uh, let's see how it was. Uh, for non-functional requirements, in fact, uh, from the literature in requirements engineering uh, documents, we can, we can find more than uh, 100 kinds of non-functional requirements. There's a paper, if you like to see, you can search. There's a survey paper about how many non-functional requirements appeared in the in the literature so they the give us more than uh, more than 100 so uh, so this a uh, lot of the, and also different uh, non functional requirements has different uh, ways to uh, deal with so this uh, i mean you can see how uh, yeah but normally in for one system we uh, we Probably only a part of uh, the non-functional requirement we can uh, uh, we need to take care of. So this is not not every system need to deal with more than one hundred non-functional requirements. So that's good things. And uh, typically, uh, especially for the cyber physical system, uh, the typical non-functional requirements contains like uh, safety, robustness, usability and efficiency, and also security, privacy, and and so on. Uh, yeah, this is the typical. Now, this uh, uh, there are some typical non-functional requirements for cyber physical systems. Today I will show some, and uh, tomorrow I will also give some ideas about uh, the typical non-functional requirements on cyber physical systems. And uh, as you can see in the late uh, in in later, 
the non-functional requirements are normally in a very higher level. It's uh, necessary to uh, break them into lower level requirements. Sometimes you need to deliver, you need to uh, break it into some function features. I can give an example to show that. This example, you have very familiar with this figure. This is a, a picture for, uh, to, to uh, illustrate in the, uh, the features of the a smart home. And one, probably one of the non-functional requirements is uh, to let uh, the home to be more comfortable. And so uh, when we're developing a software to be more comfortable, it's not uh, uh, achievable since. So we need to break uh, uh, this uh, uh, objective, uh, break it down into a uh, final grand uh, function uh, requirements. So for example, uh, the uh, more comfortable means more convenient, means uh, with more uh, suitable humidity and always more suitable temperature. And also for, for more suitable temperature, you need to sense the temperature first and uh, you, need, you, you need some functional uh, functionality to, uh, to operate on the air conditioner and also the heater etc. So that shows the idea. The, the higher level non-functional requirements, you need to break it down, break it into lower level requirements, and then break it uh, to include uh, some uh, functional function features to, uh, uh, to support uh, the achievement, achievability of the non-functional requirements. That is a uh, 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 that just show the idea about uh, how to deal with the non-functional requirements. Uh, yes, I, I have just mentioned that uh, uh, normally any non-functional requirement has his own strategies and also has a different kinds of uh, uh, of the non-functional uh, different kinds of non have a different strategies. So each I think each non-function, for example, uh, for safety, we have uh, a branch of the requirements engine is called safety engineering. Yeah, and also for privacy, it also has uh, privacy engineering and uh, security engineering like this, yeah, such, such that, et cetera. So each kind of non-functional requirements has its own strategies to deal with. Uh, the, the, this is a uh, one thing I need to uh, emphasize, and also uh, if as they because they have a different uh, strategy to deal with, people usually uh, design uh, invent some patterns to help the engineer to uh, to deal with the non-functional requirements. So the, the patterns has been uh, frequently used. In, uh, in, uh, in the uh, identif identification and uh, derivation of the non-functional requirements uh, to make uh, the non-functional requirements uh, uh, to be achievable. Uh, I mean, talking about uh, the pattern, what it means, I, I think probably you may know, but I, I would like to give more, uh, give a, a precise uh, definition about the pattern. This is a, uh, definition from the uh, directory. Uh, the pattern is a form or um, model uh, proposed for imitation. And also something designed, uh, it's uh, something designed or used as a model for making things. Yeah, there's a uh, lot of, uh, I mean, uh, this, and uh, I, I will we just check, uh, um, extract uh, the keywords from the definition and we can get a form, a model that can be used for, uh, as the guideline for making things, a repeated uh, decorative design, a design that can be followed. So that, that means this is the me meaning of the patterns that we want to use in the uh, strategy of the non-functional requirements. And uh, in fact, in software engineering, we has also, uh, uh, we, uh, yeah, pe people may learn some also patterns like uh, 
design pattern. So in software engineering, we have a design pattern already. So design pattern are typical solution to commonly occurring problems in software design. Yeah, like architecture pattern, like uh, yeah, something many many design patterns. And they are like uh, pre-made uh, blueprints that you can customize to solve a recurring design problem in your code. And also, yeah, this is a pre-made uh, blueprint, but uh, you can customize them to, uh, to, be, to match to your design problem. So this is a form, that's a model, but you can customize them to, to, be, to fit your problem. So the, the, yeah, the pattern is not a specific piece of code. It's not code, it's just a, a guideline and also the framework to solve the problem. It's a general concept for solving a particular type of problem. So that is, a, that is a scene, that is a scene. You can follow the pattern details and then uh, the pattern can guide you to implement a solution that suited to your own problem. So this, this is, a, uh, this is a, uh, the meaning of a design pattern. But the, here we want to talk, we, what we want to talk is uh, about the requirement pattern. So a requirement pattern, what is a requirement pattern? A requirement pattern is a template and a guide to write a particular type of requirements. So uh, such as if you want to write a performance, like backup, recover, some, such as such kind of uh, requirements. So tomorrow, uh, yeah, we will mention the uh, performance time requirements. So we develop some uh, uh, patterns for describe uh, the time requirements. You can see how pattern uh, it works. And also in the in the in the following slides, I will show uh, some specific patterns related to the software environment. Uh, and uh, the second point is uh, each pattern will specify what information or what concerns should be gathered from that type of requirements. Is the patterns need will will show you. You will guide the engineer, requirements engineer, to think about the problem. Yeah, we in the in the in the in the uh, about the concerns, the patterns concerns. The patterns have uh, predefined concerns that uh, ask you to uh, to to gather the information. So this uh, uh, to be a guide. Uh, the, the the pattern can serve as guideline to uh, uh, to let you uh, you can follow. Uh, to gather the information and uh, to make the model, make the make the models of the requirements. So this uh, this is the guideline, the 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 purpose for the guideline. So using uh, the, the the third point is using a single pattern to write a single requirement. So that's the step separate of concerns. That is the principle of separate of concerns. Each pattern has one specific concern, but a, a SIFT team may have a different kind of concern. So you use each pat you use a single pattern to write a single requirement. That is uh, means you need to you can uh, separate your concerns. So uh, th th this is a requirement pattern. So in the following, I work uh, I will give you some information about uh, the the problem oriented non functional requirements patterns. Some of them, the, that means the the environment uh, entity related uh, non functional requirements pattern. These are only some of them. I just uh, give uh, some examples to show how to uh, use the pattern to guide uh, your analysis of the requirements. This is a three. Let me uh, show show them one by one. The first uh, I would like to uh, mention is uh, author authorization pattern. So you know, uh, in the cyber physical system, the the person, the user, 
the user can be uh, anyone. So uh, you need to have uh, some, uh, your system need to have some uh, capability of uh, uh, access control. So this pattern uh, take care of this concern, the access control. And uh, uh, yeah, first let me show the structure. Uh, each pattern, uh, the requirements pattern uh, have a concern, have a application background. That means the concern is uh, the, the things you need to think of, uh, the, the things you need. And the application background means uh, in which cases you, you, you need to think about this concern. And also uh, the, the solution, how to write the requirements down yeah, when you, when you have this kind of concern. And uh, if you have done this, how they contribute to the whole system. Yeah, this, uh, for example, the author authorization pattern contribute to uh, enhancing the security uh, feature of the system. So it's, uh, and also it's a pre application background is there is entity that may have uh, uh, individuals with multiple instances of access on the different permission. So uh, the users can have a different permission. Yeah, this in, in, in this, uh, in, in, in when you face in these concerns. So these are the, I mean, this is a precondition yeah, the concerns and the application background, the preconditions when you use this pattern. And uh, you can, if, if this precondition you, you hold, yeah, you have, in, you, you are in this case, when you uh, do the requirements analysis, you can follow this uh, guideline to uh, make the, the to, to, to do the analysis. So, for example, uh, this part is a problem. Yeah, we, we mentioned that the problem frame. Uh, the problem, the problem means uh, the problem is an um, editing system. For the editing system, it has an operator, and also it has a work piece. Yeah, yesterday we mentioned uh, this kind of work piece uh, frame. Work, simple work piece frame. Yeah, this uh, two, this system has two uh, environment uh, entities. This is the original, original problem. But here, the operator, the type of the entity may have uh, multiple instance, may have multiple instance. And also different instance may have a different permissions to access the system. So that, that we can see the application background hold. So you, 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 you are in this background. So you need to, uh, to enhance the security of the editing system. So just follow, follow the solution to see how to enhance the editing system. Uh, so here you can make uh, some analysis about the problem. The first one, there is a uh, uh, by biddable, yeah. Biddable means autonomous entity. There is a biddable entity here, operator, uh, that may be individuals with multiple interaction on the different uh, permission. So yeah, this is a, the, the usability means this pattern you can use here. And the extension strategy, there is a interaction context diagram. This is a diagram. Uh, the sys is the sys, the system, editing system. And uh, it has a, a set of environment entity. It has a set of environment entity. Be the list of the environment and the E and the E1 has a multiple instances. The operator has a multiple instance and also has a different permission. So this is uh, the first, uh, first point. And then the second, include uh, uh, authority entity 
authority entity, the name of authority entity is Olson E. Oh, sorry, <laughs> just in this, which contains the permission assignment to all the and to all the instance of E one. So, yeah, from the original uh, problem, we enhance the original problem into a reliable editing system by including a uh, OS E permission. It's a, it's a def, 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 uh, define all the permissions for each instance of operator. So this is the second point. And the third point, allow the system maintaining and accessing this, the permission entity and the uh, init uh, and uh, the when they get the edit and uh, it can edit in the permission list so they include the entity here and the system need to be able to edit in the permission list so this is uh, uh, and also they can access the list so in this interface two events, two, uh, two operations the system can have. One is editing the permission list, one is access the permission list. So with the, that is uh, include a new uh, entity and also include a new interface with uh, this entity. And the final point is include a phenomena user identity that will be shared by E1. So, when the operator want to uh, operate the reliable entity system, the system need first to get, uh, get the operator's identity. So this is a new, new included one. So with these um, strategies, we get a reliable editing system. So this pattern, when we, we have, when we using this pattern and get for change the original, the plan editing system become, uh, change the planned editing system into a reliable editing system. So this is uh, the pattern, how to use the pattern, how to use this pattern. And then with this pattern, uh, we uh, do the, analysis of the requirements like this, this the thinking uh, crew, thinking crews. The first uh, operating operator issue a comment and the system get uh, the operator's identity. And uh, then the system uh, can access, access the, uh, the permission entity and they make a complaint, uh, then they make a com com uh, comparison, they make uh, to, to see uh, how the, the, the operator's identity can match which uh, can match which entry of the permission and to see uh, what level, what, uh, what kind of permission this operator can get. So this is, the, and then to see the, the comment, whether the comment belongs to its permission. So if it belongs to the commission, uh, permission, it's, uh, the system will allow the operator to do the operation. But it's not, but not, if the commission will not be uh, executive. It's not be executive. So it's uh, just uh, ignore or refuse the comment. So in this sense, uh, the editing system get uh, some new, new uh, specification, new requirements specification like this. So this new, yeah, uh, apart from apart apart from the besides the uh, original editing system, uh, besides the orig uh, besides the original specification of the normal of the plan uh, editing system for the reliable uh, editing system we may include these three 
lines three piece of uh, require uh, sub specification requirement specification. Uh, for example, this editing system received the operator's comment uh, based on the identity of the operator and the design the permission. The editing system decides whether the operation is allowed. If yes, the system calls the corresponding event to update the work piece. Otherwise, it reviews it. So, with this. Uh, a uh, list of uh, new uh, specification, the editing system, uh, the security of the editing system can be enhanced. So this is the first uh, uh, case of the first example of uh, how to use uh, the, the patterns to, 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 to analyze uh, uh, the, the requirements. So we can just uh, uh, go through. Continue. Next, next pattern is a buffer pattern. Buffer pattern want to want to solve the problem of the speed speed mismatch. That uh, that is also important uh, concern for cyber physical system. For example, the in the system has a a certain performance, and the outside the system, the person or other all the devices or other system has their own performance, like speed. If uh, these two two speed are not matched, uh, some comments may uh, some exchange some information exchange may get may lost. So that uh, make 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 uh, the function uh, uh, yeah may, cannot get the correct uh, uh, function. So that is uh, the issue. So the application background is uh, there is uh, environment entity is uh, interaction speed may not exactly match the system's speed. So that is a uh, application background. And uh, this, the contribution of this uh, pattern is enhanced the reliability of the system. So if you, yeah, this is what reliability issue. So in the same way, as I showed in the last pattern, we just go uh, through the strategy list and to see how the original program can be enhanced, can be extended to the new uh, program. For example, this, and also this, the first day is the same. This original editing system, this operator of work piece, but currently, the uh, the the operator probably can type very fast, and the editing system cannot uh, get a quick response to to the operator. So it uh, if you uh, if you uh, if you did not include uh, if you not include some strategies, some comments of the operator can can be ignored or yeah can be lost. So that is a problem. So uh, how to how do this? Include a buffer entity. This is the buffer entity, uh, which uh, like uh, uh, structured like a a a a, a queer. and in a like a cure. Yeah, just a, a first in first out way in in the in this way. It is used to keep the original shared interaction phenomena between the sys and the between editing system and operator. Yeah, just uh, use, using the buffer to, to, to keep uh, all the interaction phenomena. So then along the system, show the phenomena, push back or pop front with buff. So the system, when, so the system, so this, this one with, with this, so this is, so this original uh, original uh, problem diagram into a new uh, problem diagram that changed the uh, the plan editing system into a reliable system. That's what that the reliable means. All the comment from the operator uh, will be kept to uh, get a response later. So for this uh, buffer bad pattern, we also uh, the pattern also shows the ways of um, 
requirements uh, uh, analysis. So first, operator issue comment, and uh, then the structure of a, uh, oh no, this is not a structure, the, the buffer, the, 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 some mistake here. Uh, the editing system in, in put, uh, pu push, push, push the comment into the buffer. Oh uh, yeah, this one, push the comment into the buffer. And uh, then the, the system pop up, pop in front of the comment. And then they cause the operation, operation comments and then make the uh, work piece uh, change accordingly. So this uh, is a enhanced, uh, uh, enhanced program. So uh, also uh, after, after uh, using the strategy so that strategy of the of the pattern, we get uh, a set of uh, new specification, new re requirements uh, in the list. The first is uh, so the first receive the request and uh, push the request into the buffer and uh, pop pops in front of the next uh, request and uh, pro, uh, and uh, yeah execute the request by checking the event to update the working piece accordingly. So these uh, new specifications of the enhanced, uh, I mean reliable uh, editing system. So this is second. So uh, let's move on. Next is the index pattern. This index pattern uh, will uh, deal with um, time overhead or in inefficiency. And uh, the application background is there is an environment entity. It is a data a storage it needs to be accessed frequently. So it needs access. So you, the pattern, the index, yeah, yeah, it, the index is very good. Uh, it's, uh, it's very easy to understand. That is uh, just for help you to, uh, very, uh, to, to access the, uh, the item very quickly. So this is for making the index, enhance the performance. Uh, for also, for example, this is the original uh, program map display system. It's a map data and also a displayer here. Yeah, they have a two. And also a user here, user, user search the map and they display and return this, uh, the map information to the user. And uh, for the index, that means uh, include uh, index uh, entity and uh, also a store uh, store the data index one in index to the map data. Let the map data can searchable, and then uh, uh, let the system show the phenomena, get index, and maintain index structure with the uh, index uh, entity. And uh, and include the phenomena to be shared between the uh, index. Yeah, this is uh, include a new entity and also include uh, some shared phenomena between them. Yeah, in this way they uh, change, they enhance the original plan map into a smart map. Yeah, that smart means quickly response. Uh, in this. Uh, Pattern. It after using this pattern. In fact, uh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, yesterday Xiao Hong talk about uh, the projection. When the when uh, include uh, this uh, new uh, new entity that makes uh, the problem becoming two pro two problem. That is for separate of concern. Two problems. So yeah. one uh, is uh, to uh, build the index create the build the index entity. The other one is using the index entity to uh, guide uh, the search of the map. So this is also a, the you, uh, use, how to use your usage of the a projection. Yeah, that uh, has uh, uh, mentioned in uh, Xiao Hong's talk last uh, yesterday. So these are two concerns in after you in, in using the 
uh, index pattern. So let's uh, also, uh, we can also move on to next. Next one is a log pattern. So that's also be very easy to understand. Uh, the concerns of this pattern is uh, uh, the behavior trace for fault for fault detection. So this, you, if you want to trace the behavior for detecting the fault fault of the system, of the system. Yeah, you may need to use log. So in many system, yeah, probably you have no, in many system we use uh, such kind of uh, the, the mechanism, log mechanism to, to, uh, to, to record uh, the behavior of the system. And then uh, we, we can go back to, to check the system if they has a correct uh, behavior. And uh, then uh, the application background, there is a cultural environment entity. Its behavior needs to be recorded for later use. So this is application background. And, uh, and this pattern can contribute to enhance, can contribute to enhancing man, maintainability and uh, also interpretability. So this, uh, this is uh, uh, the purpose of uh, using the, this pattern. So this uh, example shows as a control, this is a control system, like, uh, I mean, like air condition controller. Yeah, we have, uh, uh, Xiao Hong has uh, give, have, uh, yeah, talked about many times about uh, this kind of uh, example. Uh, and uh, after using these strategies, we can, the, the, the normal control system uh, becoming a maintainable control system. That means they, you, they include a new entity, there's a control, the, the, the control, the, oh, no, 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 this, 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 this one. New entity means the, the log file entity. Yeah, they, to keep all the record, to keep all the record of the behavior of the controlled controlled entity. To keep uh, all the yeah with the time slot and uh, time step and also uh, the interaction between them. Yeah, to keep a list of uh, yeah of the behavior of the controlled entity, and then uh, let the, the system become. Uh, become more maintainable, become maintainable. So that is a log pattern. And with a, with a log pattern, uh, the, the, the new specification of the control system become, become this, like this. Like the, the system received the variable operators uh, or comment, the system causes an event, event to control the air conditioner in, in terms of the operator's comment, all based on a predefined uh, regulation. And the system resolves the conflicts between the operator's comments and the regulation designed comment. The system calls event update the content of log. So this is just to keep a log. And then the log can be used by other, by other problem to check if the controlled entity has a wrong, a uh, wrong behavior. So it's uh, just this problem just uh, uh, record the behavior and, uh, and the, the, the log can be used by other problem to check, uh, the, check the, the behavior of the, of the control the system. So that is a log, uh, that uh, is log pattern. And uh, let's uh, also move on. Uh, perception and the reaction pattern. So this, this pattern is also very frequently met with in the cyber physical systems. And because cyber physical the system need to direct uh, interact with direct uh, interact with uh, uh, with the real world. So it use a uh, perception and reaction to uh, to uh, interact with uh, interact with the real world. And uh, the concern about uh, this pattern, the concern of the, this pattern is that probably there are some 
abnormal states, yeah, abnormal states can, abnormal things can happen. Yeah, you, we need to detect, uh, yeah, very, yeah, very uh, frequently, and also, uh, yeah, in a, in a certain, uh, uh, in a certain way, yeah, to use, to detect the abnormal states. And uh, the application background is, uh, there are some abnormal uh, environment states that needs to be take action to avoid a disaster. For example, a yeah, safe driving car, you need uh, to detect uh, uh, any things in front of your car. Yeah, if there are something uh, appear, something Something seen in your in front of your car, you need to stop. So uh, that is a, a thing. Yeah, if uh, you need to add, take action to the abnormal state. So this uh, pattern can contribute uh, to the safety, security, and the reliability of the system. So let's also show. Uh, yeah, in the Let's also using the using examples to show the idea of the of this pattern. This is a problem that uh, is a cell phone system. As an operator, they has a cell phone. They use yeah to, through the system they operation uh, uh, operate on the cell phone. So it's a cell phone system. But uh, but the the cell phone system need to detect the, the like, uh, for example, like a battery of the cell phone. Yeah, if the cell phone in a very low battery, you need to take action to, uh, to for saving the cell phone can last for long, longer time. So that is a, a situation here. So let, let's see what uh, strategy it uh, has. So this is uh, the, 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 the precondition to use in the use in this pattern. And uh, the strategy is here. Include the uh, two cultural entities, the perception entity here, perception entity, and uh, the re reaction entity here. Yes. And uh, oh no, here. Here, this is re re reaction entity, battery protector. This is a cell phone, the sensor. Yeah, include the two, two, uh, two entities. And allow the system, the system, show the phenomena, get a sing signal, yeah, get uh, the sensor, the, the signal of the sensor, and, uh, and, uh, Allow the system share the phenomena of uh, initiate with uh, battery protector. So, yeah, that you get, you can see is if the the system get the, the sensor that shows the battery of the cell phone uh, is very low, uh, the system will initiate uh, the battery protector. Yeah, this uh, is a sense. And uh, and then let the sensor, let sensor and the battery protector connect with the cell phone. So so allowing the sensing, allowing sensing, allowing the sensor sense the battery, sense the battery, and allowing the battery protector to con to control the battery. So this, there are two, uh, two additional uh, links between, between the environment entity. So that is, uh, I think this is a new thing, we, but uh, we can see the, the, the link, the in, in, uh, interface can be between in uh, domain uh, entities, not only for system and uh, and uh, real world entities. So this this is a new thing. So this is a with this strategy, we change the we change the cell phone system 
into a safety cell phone system. So that is a uh, uh, sense. And uh, for the concerns of uh, perception and the reaction pattern, we get a new specification here. Yeah, like uh, first, sensor detected the operating conditions of the phone. This is a sensor get uh, the, the operation condition of the phone. And then the system obtains the acceleration signal from the sensor. Uh, to get a signal from the sensor. And then system initiate, if, if the sense, if have some abnormal, abnormal state, if the system detect, oh, the sensor shows some ab abnormal state, the system will initiate the send signal to stop the phone uh, from failure. So this is, a, and also the battery protector can protect uh, the phone from out of uh, tolerance and beer ambient or operating conditions to protect the user from the uh, consequence of battery failure. So that is uh, after you, uh, you deal with all the concerns, we, you get a new, some new uh, requirements uh, specification here. So the system obtains the parameters value from the sensor. The system decides whether the sense phone is in an abnormal state and the system initiated the battery protector. So that is a, a example of, to show how to use the, uh, the, the per, uh, perception and the reaction pattern. So this is uh, one. And uh, we have also uh, move on another one. Another one is uh, encryption and the decryption pattern that um, that is for deal with uh, uh, the concern about data cannot be exposed, the privacy, privacy concern. So if you, your system uh, uh, cheat some uh, data that uh, can need to be uh, in keeping in a, a, pri is a privacy data, you need to, uh, to think about uh, uh, these uh, strategies. The application background is there is a symbol, symbolic, symbolic means lecture, lack cell, yeah, in yeah, Xiao Hong's talk, it's lack cell entity. It is, uh, it's content should be protected based on the privacy regulation. So that is the application background. So the, uh, the contribution of this pattern is enhancing uh, security. So, and also the, the pattern gives us uh, strategies uh, how to enhance the security. For example, this is an ATM control system. There's a user's account, bank account, and the ATM end, uh, end station. Yeah, this user use, yeah, using the end station, but uh, through the end station, uh, it uh, input uh, the concern and the uh, password or something. So this, uh, they are, the, the, the system touches uh, the privacy, the, the, the private uh, data, private uh, data. So it's needed to, to be, uh, uh, to be, to deal with, needed to deal with the security issue. So let me, let us show, let us see how to uh, enhance the normal, the plan, uh, uh, our ATM control system into a secured ATM control system. So this uh, is uh, the description of the uh, usage of, and uh, the strategy is include an entity, include an entity, uh, increase, increase entity, contain uh, encrypt account information and uh, allow the system to share phenomena, uh, encrypt, encrypting the, the account information with, uh, and also, and also uh, decrypt, decrypt, decrypting the secured account information. So it uh, include an entity and include a new interface and the entity 
or contain encrypted data and they and in the interface these two shall uh, encrypting uh, information and uh, decrypting information with this one. So this is a way, this is a strategy for include, uh, for enhancing the security. So this program become a, a encry encrypted ATM control system that we can call it secure the ATM control system. And uh, and also the concerns concerns of the pattern include uh, cons uh, the concerns uh, uh, delivered by the pattern is uh, the system concerns the first step system access the account uh, account account information, and the system causes the event to create the encrypted content information shared with uh, shared with the secured account. And then uh, here, and then they have some structure to uh, ensure the system be being corrected, saved. And uh, then uh, here, uh, this uh, system get uh, the encrypted account information. And then here, system decrypt uh, the in, uh, encrypted uh, the information and causes events to control the ATM to correct displayed. So this uh, is a concern. So after using the pattern to get a new specification of the ATM system, this new specification can make the system more secure. So this uh, is uh, some example about uh, how to uh, invent uh, patterns to help uh, the requirements engineers to anal analyze uh, uh, the, the non-functional requirements. So this uh, is the first part of, uh, of uh, the second uh, uh, session. Let's move to the second part. The second part, I just want to choose one of uh, a set of important uh, non-functional requirements and uh, to show how to do it with uh, environment uh, uh, centered, uh, uh, centric uh, requirements engineering, how to make uh, the city more dependable. And uh, then first, I would like to tell a little bit about uh, what is um, dependability. This, uh, also, this is uh, of course a non-functional requirements. First is a non-functional requirements. And also it's a, uh, it is also a quality properties of a, of the product, and uh, also, yeah, they have three uh, features. It's a long function requirement. It's a quality pro pro property, and also it's a under specified functional requirement. What I mean is, this is say for for uh, for enhanced uh, dependability you need to improve many function points, many functional requirements to support the dependability. Don't like uh, other non-functional requirements, just, uh, just the quality and the to, 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 use, to, to be used to measure the system. It's a, it's a need, when you uh, analyze uh, dependability, you need to include uh, more function functionalities to uh, to be uh, that need to be implemented in your system. So uh, also this, this picture, this uh, diagram shows uh, uh, what uh, included in the what is in what are included in the in the scope of the dependability. I just uh, want to uh, don't want to give. Yes, we have mentioned that uh, the three uh, penetrations in the requirements engineering. And uh, when we uh, do the uh, analysis, requirement analysis, uh, we, we, uh, we first um, analyzing environment feature and also uh, we can, uh, yeah, we can, we can first, we first, yeah, directly focusing on requirements. Yeah, in traditional requirements and you only focus on, uh, directly focus on the requirements. And uh, 
In fact, for cyber physical system, we need to uh, analyzing environment features. And also we need to consider the system potential faults. So for you, we need to uh, using the three uh, penetrations to, to guide, guide our uh, requirements and engineering process. And also for the dependability, is uh, just uh, enough quality uh, pro property because for dependent you can you can include uh, many many function functionalities to uh, enhance the dependability but sometimes it, it make uh, it cost a lot and also cost many, using many times to do that. So it, you need to make a balance between the dependable and the cost and the time to market and also the resource, et cetera. So we need to identify, exactly identify which part of the system we need to make it more dependable. Yeah, it's not, uh, I mean, for many systems, not uh, everywhere you want the more dependable, only part of them. Yeah, for example, in a, uh, in accounting system, just the, I mean, the, the bank homepage, you don't need a very, uh, uh, very, uh, very secure, but uh, the accounting, uh, uh, the, 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 the core system, you need to make, uh, make it very dependable. So that is what I mean. Dependable, dependability, yeah, in the cyber physical system, the dependability requirements come from the environment, come from the, the interactive con context, yeah, which is in the world, in the real world. So, and also they come from the system fault. So this is uh, what we need to, uh, to, to, to take care. But in cyber physical system, the, the, the system's environment is open and dynamic. The entity in the environment normally are autonomous, undetermined, and probably malicious and error prone, so et cetera. So the dependability is very important. But why a system will, be, will not dependable? So uh, sometimes uh, they are not, uh, yeah, in, for this kind of requirements, it's not for satisfied requirements. And it may, it, it's for deal with the side effect of the system. So some, sometimes we need to think the side effect. Uh, four reasons for the system are not uh, dependable. The arrows and the malicious attack yeah, this is a, obviously are the threats of the system dependability. And the change, changes in cultural entity, that is another threat of the, of the system uh, dependability. That, this one is building, uh, you bring in new uh, domain assumption. This one is, uh, for example, the malicious attack may cause unanticipated domain behaviors. And uh, also the third, uh, third, uh, third thing is uh, on proper system, pro yeah, the, some wrong behavior of the system may cause, may cause in disaster to critical environment entity that may call the photo machine behaviors. So for example, if the safe driving car, yeah, if a, a human just standing in the in front of a safe driving car, if the uh, you 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 drive the car and the, the system the behavior, this is a wrong behavior. So that is a fault of machine behavior. Fault in the system producing undesired system performance. This is also unanticipated machine behavior. So there's some many reasons for the for the for undependable. So in this sense, we need to uh, let remember the uh, perception and the reaction pattern was we include 
control, we include, uh, we include the sense and the, and the control entity to build a control loop here, so to build a control loop to deal with the changing and the unanticipated behavior. So here for the for making the system more dependable, we can re, uh, in, re, re use, uh, we can use the control control theory controls uh, uh, control technique. For example, this is a, uh, this is a architecture for making the system more uh, uh, dependable, uh, control based system architecture. Well, uh, as I analyzed in, in the previous slides, undesired environment behavior is a threat of the system and the undesired system, undesired system behavior also a threat of the system. So we can include uh, two kinds of uh, controller here. The first feed forward controller deal with the undesired environment behavior. And uh, the feedback controller deal with the undesired system behavior. So in this way, uh, we can detect the abnormal behavior from the outside the system and also from the inside of the system. So that is a strategy of making the system more, uh, uh, more dependable. But how to build the controller? The controller is a new included uh, component in the system. Uh, this, this component core system is a original system and we, we include the two two components in the system to build a bigger system. You see, this is also machine domain. Yeah, this is uh, with a rectangle with uh, two lines in, so this is a machine domain. Yeah, so this machine has uh, three components. How to make, how to do, how to uh, build uh, these two kinds of uh, uh, controller. So, oh, let me see, yeah, yes. So, and also we can, uh, in fact, uh, uh, in many, uh, in some uh, literature, it shows the different kind of threats, faults may have a different uh, countermeasures to deal with. So if the controller can detect uh, the threats and the faults, and also it can deploy the countermeasure uh, to deal with the threats, that will be helpful to 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 let the, to to make the system more dependable. That is a very high level view of this uh, uh, these things. So for uh, so we we can build a conceptual models like this one, the the environment, some data, some designed entity, some operators, and uh, other other things of in the physical world. They have a share the phenomena between them. And uh, uh, the data may have some, uh, also this is some threats, some functional, uh, function pro uh, profile is a core system function functionality. And the control profile means the fit forward control, feedback control, yeah, this uh, uh, have a fit forward control, feedback control. So feedback control deal with the system behavior uh, deviation and the feed forward control the the threats from the outside deal with the threats from the outside. So this is a, a really high level conceptual model. So from the literature, we can uh, build a a, ba a a knowledge base uh, about uh, I mean the uh, some. The, for the for each uh, environment entity or system assets. Um, on this, uh, which one uh, is normal undesired, uh, undesired features and uh, also imply the concerns. We can, we can build uh, the corporations between these three uh, concerns or in the, in the uh, build, when, 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 when doing, when, when identify the concerns, we build uh, such kind of uh, knowledge base to, I mean, can be extract the knowledge from the literature and uh, then build uh, 
entity uh, threat and countermeasure. That means if in your environment entity have some, if your environment entity has such kind of uh, uh, features, it may face to such kind of uh, threat. And it, you probably can include this kind of a countermeasure to deal with the threat. So this, uh, this knowledge base contains all the information. So with this uh, information, we can start to build uh, the controllers. So then we can also use, I mean, like, uh, like, like use use case, use case, can be used to specify the business functional requirements. But uh, for each use case, yeah, in the functional requirements, it can mention many like system assets, like uh, environment entity. Yeah, for this system assets and the environment entity, we can include the feed forward controller to handle the potential undesired input. Yeah, if we detect an input is a pack or an arrow, it means they detect, detected the external threats. And also include a feedback controller to handle the potential system behavior deviation. These are the internal threats. So the controller or both controllers uh, uh, in charge of uh, to de detect uh, the external threats and uh, all the internal threats. And uh, adopt the threat countermeasure patterns we built uh, in, in last uh, uh, slides, yeah, using the specific domain knowledge to specify the operationalization of the controller and also within the controller and the use case, normal use case to build a dependable use case. That is a pro process of the requirements uh, elicitation. Yeah, this is a, for example, we use a normal use case to define the functional requirements. And uh, you, can, you can think about, we can think about, oh, what services does the city need to deliver? And the, when you when deliver these services, what kind of threats they can make? They can, they can, they need, they, they probably need, uh, they will, will face, will face at with which kind of uh, uh, threats. And then, if they identif we identify the threats, uh, you inc then include the, the control case, uh, you include the controller to deal with the uh, threats by uh, deploying the, the countermeasures uh, accordingly. So, and then build a use and the control case model. This is the process. So in this sense, it, it, I mean, it was to, to note that the, in many cases, yeah, exa exa uh, especially in this case, non-functional requirements are argumentations of the functional requirements. So this, uh, the control case, uh, I mean, our, our control cases are argumentation of the use cases. So this is the, the this is the uh, meaning of the argumentation. So, so uh, this uh, this is a detailed uh, a process. A use case model, then identify undesired interactions, and then access. So, uh, for for accessing the risks means we need to deal with the cost issue. If the risk is very low, the loss of the of the thread is very low, we don't we probably don't need to uh, to do anything. We we just uh, let it. And if the risk is very high, we need of course to include the, the countermeasure to to deal with. So and then uh, determine the after the uh, assessment and uh, determine the, which kind of uh, control policy we can use. And then we, yeah, if, uh, and then we can go through back, go back, it, it, 
to, to, to identify new threats. And that is an interactive way to develop the, uh, to elicitate, to elicit the requirements. So this, this is. So in more details, identify the uh, non-functional requirements is based on use cases. But here, the use cases not only contain the expected uh, interaction, but also the undesired interaction. So this, from the undesired interaction, we identify the, uh, we, uh, we include uh, the control cases to deal with it. This just to show an example for the elicitation process. For, the, for example, the customer input the account and the password. This is a use case. And the use case for login and the property of the, the frequency. So there are two, two concerns in, in the use case. The first is the frequency of the interaction. How often, how if you try the password more than three times, normally the system need to reject. Uh, so this is the frequency. And also the confidential, confidentiality of the count and the password. So these are two, two concerns of in the use case. And also the deviation of the property. The interaction occur frequently and the guide, yeah, using some uh, guide words to detect uh, detect the, the the property. Yeah, for example, more than like more than three times. This is guide guide words. And the account and password is disclosed. Uh, that means no. Yeah, the account and password cannot be disclosed. They disclosed. So this is a privacy issue. So this, uh, uh, yeah, with these guidelines, we can you can you can detect. Uh, the concerns, do, do we need to de uh, deal with the concerns? And then uh, after we access the, the risk, uh, we need to include the, the countermeasures uh, to deal with the threats. For example, we, we may include, uh, we may identify the probably some, some malicious uh, attacker has using some uh, Attack way attacks to 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 come to uh, to to detect uh, to attack the system. So this is a this is a way to identify the threat and the, the system behavior deviation uh, from the use case. So when we uh, detect the uh, when we get uh, the threats uh, from the from the use case we. Uh, we can include the control case. And also we define uh, several, and also define the patterns for the control, for the control case. This pattern is a, a fit forward control case. Fit forward control case means the first one is a control which use case and the, and the, the stakeholders and the, this is the example. And the, the thread model, the thread Thread model, this, this thread model, unauthorized access the, to un, the un, customer may buy a lot of goods, something, something. And uh, also the controls, where the customer log in the city need to require the customers to provide the password and the uh, validate it. And if it's not, if it's valid, allow to end, otherwise deny the login. So this is uh, how to control the threads. And also, this is the pattern for feedback control. And also, for example, this is a, for response time monitor and the control. And we just want to want to go through the details. And let me let us see how to uh, how to build the model. So here, yeah, here you may know this is the online store system. The use case, the customer uh, has two uh, use case: login and the search goods. And uh, from here, uh, you may identify a thread here, unauthorized uh, access. And uh, uh, this is a thread. You, you access the access risk. You, you identify this is a thread. And you need to include a control behavior, control things. You need to include a feed forward control, feed forward control case. Feed forward means control the outside external threats. This is external threat. So you include a, a strategy for controlling all, 
authentic authentication to control the logging. So this is a uh, one thing. And uh, let's see to this uh, use case, uh, search good. And you found the search good has a threat. It's a response delay. Uh, response delay is a threat. Then, but this is uh, not from outside, it's from the system. The system, the, the response is not uh, uh, is not uh, as quick uh, quick as as uh, as, uh, as supposed. So this is a system behavior deviation. So we you need to include a feedback control case uh, to control the response time uh, to do the response time monitor and the control control system. For example, you probably you uh, not uh, answer so many uh, not answer so many uh, requests. And keep the so the lots of strategy to make the system response faster. So this is a this is a way to include on in based on the normal use case you include a control case. And in fact, we can include a multi level controls. So for example, for the authentic authentication, you may have. A, I then you may identify another uh, threat, like here. You may identify another threat. Yeah, there are some attack uh, threat. Uh, uh, the this uh, this uh, function, this function point. So you include uh, also another another countermeasure to deal with this, and also they have you. You can have lots of uh, uh, many many levels control, but you don't need to extend too long because it costs a lot and uh, and uh, and decrease your the performance of the system if you if you include uh, too many strategies to protect your system. So this just depends on uh, the system the 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 situation of the uh, the system's usage. So this one in this uh, in this uh, we can just show uh, 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 and uh, uh, com a more complete examples on this. For example, this is an online stack trading system. Uh, they have lots of uh, use case here, and uh, then sub sub use case here, and uh, then uh, they have uh, uh, actor here. And uh, different um, kind of uh, oh yeah yeah just just a case study on online stock trading system yeah you can you can do that by yourself this uh, just a uh, uh, use case the the relationship between use cases and uh, and here we can choose one use uh, one or two use cases to show for example when you. Uh, uh, writing, not using diagram, using a, a texture to write your use case is like this one. The use case name, actor, uh, precondition, main flow, uh, and uh, post condition, and uh, alternative flows. Yeah, this is a use case. And from this use case, you can identify uh, the potential threat here. Like uh, from this, you can find. Uh, the account name and the password. Uh, the trader has logged in the system. Yeah, and re-entering the account. For example, submit submit an order. So yeah, like this these words, this this partial sentence in, uh, implied some uh, threats. Uh, in, in implied some threats. So when we identify uh, the threats, we can build uh, the the control case here, for example, submit uh, an order. Uh, you can have uh, one uh, one uh, system deviation that uh, maybe could be a slide uh, thread, and you have uh, you may have identify three uh, uh, direct uh, uh, threats from outside, and also uh, the second level uh, threats. From outside, so this uh, this is just to show how to uh, developer 
the control cases from uh, the use case. So uh, yeah, this uh, this is uh, this is for yeah this this the the circle in the circle is a pair of the control, uh, the thread and the control case. So this in each circle. Uh, yeah, this thread uh, for this for design. So, and uh, when we uh, when we uh, have uh, so we, from from the control case, we also can write the control case down. Control case down using the format the similar like uh, with the use case. So this uh, uh, this is some control cases. And also, uh, we using uh, some uh, uh, use case uh, uh, design system. We can also build in the uh, build in the control case into uh, with a normal with a with a normal use case, and then become uh, uh, the, the 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 become a con uh, secure the control a secure the user case yeah like we to see we include uh, we include uh, this flow this uh, flow here and this here is this is this, these are two these are two control control strategies here include the normal use case so that uh, the whole use case become secure use case yeah these two are secure the use case and then we can let it include uh, the design design part. So include uh, uh, this. This is for equal. Just want to skip it. Don't go to because this is for design. So include the two uh, several uh, new actors in the uh, in the diagram. Oh yes, just uh, skip. Then. Summarize, <laughs> summarize, summarization about the, the dependability. So I think I, I would like to say model system as a control system is the first point of the dependability issue. Uh, and the, that means that within a certain context for handling the critical features in the interactive environment and the unexpected system behavior, use, use controllers to guarantee the satisfaction of uh, requirements. Yeah, and remember this is a, a, a environment assumption. This means the requirements. And using feed forward controller to control the environment factor using the feedback controller to avoid the disaster resulted by the system behavior deviation. And the third point is to provide guidelines to help identify controlling policies based on the knowledge about the strategies of uh, enhancing system dependability. Oh, this, this, this one is for the, the system design and so I don't uh, just... Uh. So uh, key points here. For many, for many non-functional requirements, we normally start from function uh, scenarios and, the, and, the, and the modeling the function requirements uh, the, the, and then uh, modeling the interaction between the system and its uh, interactive environment and each Dependability requirements is attached yeah, onto the functional point. Yeah, like uh, I have shown in the example. And also this way we use a knowledge-based way to, to uh, tell the, to define the strategies for dealing the uh, uh, dependability issue. So this uh, is, uh, and of course for other, other non-functional requirements related to an environment of to be also, they have also many, many other non-functional. And in uh, this talk, uh, in this workshop, we were a little bit more, we, we, can, we cannot tell all the non-functional requirements. We were little, little, we will talk about a little bit about the space and the time uh, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, and uh, and to show how non-functional requirements can be dealt with. So, 
this is the 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 lecture of my own video. Oh yeah, this is the the book. Uh, Xiao Hong just uh, mentioned before, and if you want to know more details, you can find the, uh, the contents here in this book. We have, uh, uh, I mean, it's uh, the, for this three chapter, you know, the norm, the, the, the just the, uh, inter interaction, uh, uh, in, in introducing introducing of the requirements and and for this chapter, on uh, talk about the ontology ontology issue and for this chapter talking about the functional requirements and also non-functional requirements so that's uh, that's it and then uh, finally thank you thank you for your attention thank you uh, just uh, finish uh, the session so if you have any question or you can ask now or you can write me uh, through email then I want to, I can stop my sharing screen. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. It's wonderful. Thank you. I hope you like. <laughs> so nice of you, thank you. Thank you. So uh, if I have happened the uh, uh, direct questions, I think uh, we can uh, finish. Or oh. uh, uh, do you have questions in the chat room? Uh, let me check. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, uh, or oh, knowledge, knowledge based. Yeah, knowledge based. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's of course related to artificial intelligence. But here we just keep the knowledge and using search the knowledge to use a strategy. Not many uh, inference. Uh, um, uh, also, machine learning. No, it's not related. No <laughs> machine learning ways to use in the law. So just use knowledge. Okay. Yeah, just write, write, write any question to me through my through the email. So, well, thank you so much, ma'am. Again, it was a very interesting session today. And uh, yes, ma'am. And tomorrow, yeah. inshallah, we will join again for the same session. Okay. Thank you. Then see you tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. See you.